Hello friends, Assalamu alaikum. So after completing the uh, main topics about thermal power plots, uh, now we are in a position to uh, study the thermal power stations. Uh, yeah, you can see thermal power plot systems and their applications. So as I already told you that uh, the, the more uh, power generation in India is from thermal power stations as it is written also here that 60% of electric power is produced by steam plants in India. Now uh, and also the fossil fuel used in the thermal power plants is uh, mostly uh, coal and India is uh, in its fifth position to uh, contain the uh, fossil amount uh, quantity of fossil fuels and there are many grades of fossil fuels a grade uh, fossil fuels are also used here so that means uh, to produce the electric current in the uh, using thermal power plants uh, the fossil fuel that is coals are used mostly but uh, if 60 percent of the power generation in India is from uh, thermal power plants then what is, why is it necessary to use hydroelectric power system power plants the uh, the answer is that uh, since uh, the wa water is a natural source and uh, because of its availability uh, it is uh, the power generation from hydroelectric power station is, is uh, cheap and uh, since we are using in steam power plants we are using uh, fossil fuels so that means it will be costly than the hydroelectric power stations otherwise the efficiency is you can say 60 percent of power generation from thermal uh, power stations which is more than hydroelectric power stations that means that is why because of the uh, availability of water and uh, the um, and the, uh, this uh, availability of water and the utilization of coal or fossil fuels in the thermal power stations uh, the hydroelectric power stations uh, or hydroelectric power plants are preferred more than the thermal power stations that is you can see in Kashmir as well we have we, we have more we are mostly dependent on the hydroelectric power stations because of the availability of water and and it is uh, which is naturally here so also you can see the, uh, the other theory from uh, for the thermal power station is you can uh, we have already discussed these things here what what is the uh, what are its how it's, uh, it works since uh, before discussing it is uh, various things advantages and disadvantages i will tell you one thing that uh, as you know this uh, thermal power station is based on the it is working on the uh, thermodynamic cycle that is a Rankine cycle so uh, for when we uh, when we uh, discuss Rankine cycle or when we draw it is uh, PV, TV or HS diagram or it is flow chart uh, we are uh, discussing uh, some of its parts suppose we are um, showing their um, boiler as main part steam engine steam turbine uh, condenser uh, uh, pump uh, these their uh, parts are these are enough uh, these parts are enough to describe the Rankine cycle and uh, so we are for uh, for explaining the Rankine cycle we are uh, showing some of its parts and uh, there are uh, two isentropic uh, uh, process and one is uh, uh, one is heat addition and one is heat rejection process so that is the enough these are enough processes that that is for any particular thermodynamic cycle we, you need at least four processes to for the completion of the cycle that is adiabatic or asymptotic process or two uh, processes where there is heat addition and rejection as you have you can you have already read uh, studied these things from your uh, basic thermodynamics now let us uh, but in this now in the, the topic today we are discussing that we are we have to discuss some other parts of the thermal power stations which do we don't know which don't know previously so that is why this is the most important and last topic of you of this unit and uh, before that coming on these parts we will first discuss what are advantages and disadvantages of the thermal power plants so let us move on the advantages and distance of thermal power stations, thermal power plants. So in thermal, uh, on the basis of advantages, you can see less initial cost as compared to other genetic stations. So for uh, for uh, for the implementation of this, or for the for, for the formation for the manufacturing of this um, uh, thermal power plant, you need uh, uh, the initial cost is less as compared to other power plants. Uh, so it requires less uh, land as compared to hydropower plant the fuel coal is cheaper 
the cost of generation is less than that of diesel power plants. So it is initial cost is uh, less as compared to other for for its installation installation it is in, in, initial cost is less as compared to other power plants. Uh, but since coal is he, used here that is why uh, we are preferring first hydroelectric power plants then second is the coal thermal power plants. And uh, uh, but it's uh, it, it, the, the two advantages of it is, uh, is more than uh, as compared to diesel power plants, which will be discussed later. So now there are some disadvantages that it pollutes the atmosphere. Since there are the random flue gases uh, produced in in the combustion chamber or in the uh, turbine in this um, uh, in the boiler of the uh, this steam power thermal power plant, they are when they go when they are uh, escaped into the atmosphere, they produce pollutions. So uh, the overall efficiency of a thermal power plant is less than 30 percent. So its efficiency is less than 30 percent, requiring longer time for erection, erection and put into action. So it is operation requires uh, more much time, and it is costlier in co in comparison to with hydro and nuclear power plants. So because uh, because of using fossil fuels, it may be uh, coal uh, that is solid or liquid form of fuel or gas form of fuel. So its cost of uh, operation is more in, in comparison to hydro and nuclear power plants. So requirement of water is in should needs uh, in huge quantity. Now let us come on to the flow chart of the, this uh, systematic diagram of the uh, thermal power plant. You can see here there first to look at the boiler. So you can see from the boiler there is a uh, economizer is there and uh, superheater is there and economizer is connected to this uh, uh, boiler drum and the boiler drum is connected to uh, the boiler drum is connected to the ash handling plant and there are coal handling plant there is coal storage there is a mill uh, from which we can put uh, the uh, this fuel and this economizer is uh, uh, it is connected to the uh, also it's, uh, this boiler is connected finally connected to the uh, chimney where exhaust gas goes and there is a uh, I, there's a id fan and there is has also the superheater is connected to the value to connect to the turbine through a value and the uh, and the exhaust uh, this uh, the steam coming out from the turbine is when it uh, is connected to the condenser then the condenser pull this after condensing this uh, steam it goes finally to the this condensing pump and feed water so a feed water pump you can call it feed water pump and this pump again lifts the this liquid condensed liquid into the commonizer so there is a, also this turbine coupled with a generator and this um, uh, there are other some other parts it can be discussed uh, hereafter so you can see this a very simple peak of this so you can you can see here there we have, we have there we can see here there are many other parts you don't know uh, previously uh, because for the rank cycle you know it's only three four parts that is boiler uh, turbine and uh, pump feed water pump and condenser for making that uh, rain kind cycle but there are lots of parts uh, which we have to discuss now now let us the uh, other topic in your syllabus is what is this what should be the sele site selection for for a thermal power plant that is for installing a thermal power plant what should be the site selection what are should be these requirements and what are what are should be the factors for installing this site uh, uh, this thermal power plant so you can see here their nearness to the load center that means uh, the power generation produced in the city in thermal power plant should be uh, should be supplied to the doors should be supplied either it should be uh, at a residential side or it should be at some industrial site but this this available this supply supply uh, supplied of power system should be uh, nearer to the uh, this um, thermal power plant so the everything should be nearer to the thermal power plant whether it should be uh, to to home supply or it should be to other sub supply should be supplied to other uh, industrial area but it should be nearer to the thermal power station so water resources there should be a lot of power resources available uh, uh, near the thermal power station so and it should be in huge quantity and it is there are many there are various functions of water resources first it is supplied to boiler second function of the water is uh, it circulates uh, it is used as a circulation for the cooling tower or it is used uh, for the uh, for the cleaning of the uh, this plant or boiler so there are many functions of the water sources but the main function is that it is used for the uh, is there feed water for the boiler uh, to make to uh, farm a uh, steam 
and availability of coal the coal of the availability of coal should be also nearer to the uh, this power plant land requirement there should be enough land for the require for the all this uh, for the uh, installation of the thermal power plant and for example for 2000 megawatt plant the land requirement should be of the order of 200 to 250 acres so you can understand that how much land requirement should be for this uh, for the installation of thermal power plant and you can also transportation facilities should be very uh, should be should be easily available for the uh, for uh, all uh, uh, for 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 the uh, supplement of all uh, these facilities and uh, documents and labor uh, supplies labor should be available uh, should be skilled and easily available ash disposal the ash since you know that tons of ash is uh, farmed uh, for the, uh, the in thermal power plant so we need to we need to dump this ash uh, either in the underground or there should be some sea or water sources where we can throw this ash so that means there should be some space uh, available or there should be some water source available or sea available uh, in front of this thermal power plant so that we can we can uh, throw this ash or this ash can be utilized in some other purposes suppose if the site is nearer to the coal mine it can be dumped into the discussed mine so in case of site located near the river sea or ash lack ash can be dumped into it so there is other function of the ash it can it is used by the brick makers you do you know what are what are brick mirrors that is which are used for the home construction that is it is also used for this ash is also used for the brick used by the brick um, uh, makers uh, so you can it is also written here ash is the main waste product of steam power plant and with low grade coal it can be 3.5 tons per day some suitable means for disposal of ash should be through of it so it may be purchased by building purchase by building construct contractors or it can be used for brick making near the power plant so let us come on to the next uh, what is the what should be the uh, site faculty uh, facility for the uh, that is distance from the polluted area so distance from polluted area so that means the continuous burning of coal at the power station produces smoke fumes and ash so which pollute the surrounding area such as pollution due to smoke is dangerous for the people living around the area and the site of the plant should be considerable distance from the polluted pollution uh, polluted area okay now major what are now let's move on the most important topic that is major components of thermal power plant as i told you already that there are some main parts four to five that we have we are this we have already discussed in rank and cycle but there are some other parts important parts in the thermal power plant that is coal handling plant Polarizing plant, coal handling plant means which stores the coal and supply it to the boiler. Polarizing plant, it is the it is the system of part of the uh, this thermal power plant where the coal is uh, crushed into the small particles and uh, draft or draft fan. It so it removes the exhaust gas gases from the boiler to the chimney uh, or to the atmosphere. Boiler is the other, other part as you know ash handling plant where which stores the ash coming from from the burning of the coal turbine and generator is you know already condenser cooling tower and ponds that is these are used for the uh, for the uh, circulate circulate the water and it it cools the whole uh, this whole thermal power system so it maintains the temperature of the whole power system so feed water heater so it is used for the so to feed the to supply the water to the feed water feed uh, water heater so it increases the temperature of the feed water before supplying to the boiler so economizer it is the part of the boiler so which maintains the which uh, which change which uh, which uh, changes the uh, this uh, water into saturated form at constant temperature economizer so another is super heat super heat and reheater this is the main component of the boiler where this uh, this uh, this water coming out from the economizer it is uh, this dry steam come out, coming out from the boiler before entering into the turbine is superheated uh, and also reheater is there they have they have both functions so they are making this steam dry before before entering or before impinging on the turbine blades and air preheater so air is also a main air is a main part of the boiler I, I main component of the boiler because air uh, fuel mixture gives you the flue gases which are utilized in the boiler for the steam generation so air is preheated so when you, you preheat the air so it gives you uh, most uh, efficiency increases also efficiency so alternator with exciter uh, alternator with exciter this is the other component it will you can see it is from the uh, below uh, pr production and control equipment so these are there are the control unit in the boiler system uh, 
thermal power plant as as you can see you have also control system in at your home just is same at the control system is for the uh, this uh, software based control system is for the steam power plant and instrumentation system so all these can be seen here boiler you know already so boiler is, is the main part of this steam power plant and mostly water to boilers are used by in thermal power plants because uh, in water to boilers uh, you can uh, you know that water to in water to boilers uh, the steam generation capacity is more so uh, there is also uh, let us move on the <coughs> superheater and reheater the function of the superheater is to remove the last trash of moisture from the saturated steam leaving the boiler tubes and also increase the temperature above the saturation temperature so all these uh, these superheaters uh, uh, this um, uh, superheater and uh, other things these these are comes in the uh, category of uh, boiler accessories that we have already discussed superheater and reheaters this is the function of superheater and reheater now let us move on the this is the diagram for the superheater and this is the actual diagram this uh, picture of view what is what is how superheater looks and let us reheater in addition to the superheater modern boiler has reheater also so reheater after coming out from superheated steam it is also reheated again so it is further reheated so that there will be no moist uh, this uh, steam so it will be fully dry so that there will be no boiler or blade or turbine erosion okay so to to prevent the system from the erosion we are using superheater and reheaters okay erosion is a type of wear so you you will you can study it in the in your uh, turbine uh, uh, this classes so if you have you want if you want to know from me so i can give you a full answer of this but this time i will not explain it so erosion is a part it is a it is a uh, erosion is a part of wear and it is the erosion occurs because of the liquid and this metal parts and it is a it is a uh, long time wear so a reheater may be conversion type reagent type or combustion type so let us move on the what feed water heaters so before feed i told you that these heaters are used to feed the heat the feed water by means of blunt steam before it is supplied to the boiler necessity of the heating feed water before feeding it back to the boiler raises the uh, arises due to the following reasons so it is also it is also the part of the, this as a series and it's it's used for the, it is the efficiency feed water heating improves all our efficiency also so here you can see this the so this are the systematic uh, diagram of the water flow the water steam flow uh, it shows all the feed water uh, this your feed water this is a uh, cooling tower this is pump this is condenser pump this is a low pressure heater this is deteriorator so the function of the deteriorator it is it is also discussed later it function of deteriorator is to, it it removes the uh, oxygen and other uh, poisonous gases from the uh, this um, this liquid so feed water pump uh, hp heater uh, high pressure heater economizer then there is a boiler superheater then finally the dry superheater steam is entered to the steam turbine and it is connected with the generator so it is uh, it's also you can say also it is a rank kind of cycle so uh, economizer the as i told you many times that function of the economizer it the boilers are part of it economizer and air filters to recover heat from the flue gases so economizer also uh, uses uh, where it is economizer where is it is preheater where, uh, where it, it is uh, other thing they all use uh, gases uh, heat from the exhaust gases that means the exhaust if, if we don't use the heat from the exhaust gases that means it, it will be uh, sent to the atmosphere uh, so there will be lost of uh, in heat energy so we are using the economizer also used the heat from the exhaust gases and almost an increase of about 20 percent in boiler efficiency is achieved by providing both economizer and air preheater so you can understand it is not a joke that 20 percent efficiency increased if because of the economizer and air pre and uh, superheater and so that means these are these are uh, called these are boiler accessories and they are uh, they are especially used for the increase in the efficiency so the heat used by economizer and superheater are from the flue gases that is flue gas means that is gases coming out from the, the from coming out from the boiler uh, the after necessary uh, function so economies that have all uh, alone gives 10 to 10, 12 percent efficiency increase causes saving in fuel consumption to 5 to 15 percent so this you can uh, study easily uh, this thing is so air preheater so they uh, as i already told you that <coughs> air preheater is that means they are uh, 
increasing the temperature of the air before and before mixing with the fuel so the air so after the fuel gases leave economizer some further heat can be extracted from them and used to heat the incoming air for combustion so the air filter has following types polar type regular type regenerative type so there are uh, this is the uh, diagram for the air filter and so let us steam turbine so you know already what is the function of steam turbine so steam entering from a small as you i just elaborate one thing one thing here that uh, just just i told you in the previous lecture that the decrease in entropy uh, from uh, when the when the steam comes out from the nozzle is utilized in increasing the uh, impulse of the turbine so steam entering from a small opening attains a high velocity so the velocity attained during expansion depends on the initial and final content of the steam so so the initial uh, speed of the steam entering the turbine and the steam uh, uh, steam and uh, velocity of the steam at the exit of the turbine so defense of the steam at the exit exit and, and inlet of the turbine gives the necessary uh, impulse uh, gained by the turbine so the defense in initial and final content present in the heat energy to be converted to kinetic energy so that means i mean to say that the jo exit pe, uh, boiler exit pe jo velocity hogi turbine ko uh, velocity hogi steam ko aur jo entry pe velocity hogi unki defense jab hum karenge that will be equal to the uh, kinetic energy gained by the turbine theek hai because just like uh, every turbine has initial and uh, entry and exit same is the case here for steam turbine as well so there are, are two types of uh, steam turbine impulse turbine reaction turbine so mostly i will just want you already you already study these things so i will already just mention here one thing that only that mostly uh, reaction reaction turbines are used for the for the thermal power plants so the let, let us move on the uh, this compound of steam turbines you already know these things governing apni uh, pada hoga governing means it maintains the uh, the speed of the uh, turbine by controlling the supply of steam okay because of the fluctuation is lowered so speed of the turbine may be uh, increased or decreasing so we 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 maintain the speed of the turbine by by changing the quantity of steam so this this is the concept of governing so condensers you know the, what is the concept of function of condenser you already know this type of condensers you already can already uh, study these from this these notes and also deteriorators i already told that a deteriorator is a device that is widely used for the removal of oxygen and other dissolved gases from the feed water to a steam generating boilers so before entering the feed water to the boiler a deteriorator device is used it is passed to the deteriorator so what is the function of deteriorator it removes the removal of oxygen and other dissolved gases because oxygen present in the water and other other uh, um, dissolved gases can cause uh, this uh, erosion or some other type of corrosion there or rusting may be there also so it is necessary to remove this so detector is used, used for that purpose so cooling tower and space so cooling tower what, what is the purpose function of cooling tower they are used for the for cooling the whole boiler uh, plant uh, this uh, steam turbine power plant so cooling towers but uh, cooling towers uh, are used when there is uh, the, the, when the, there is no near uh, river or any other water source available there जब वहाँ पे जब जब जहाँ पे प्लांट होगा अगर वहाँ पे कोई रिवर या सी अवेलेबल नहीं होगा तो उस टाइम हम कूलिंग वाटर टावर्स यूज करते हैं सो व्हाट इज द फंक्शन ऑफ कूलिंग टावर्स इट रिसीव द दिस एग्जास्ट दिस एग्जास्ट गैसेस एंड दिस वार्म अप वाटर एंड इट सेंड इट बैक इन कूल फॉर इन कूल शेप सो Condensers need huge quantity of water to condense the steam. So water is let into the plants by means of circling water pumps and other passing through the condenser is discharged back to the river. So in such a cases, if such a case is not available, closing closed cooling tower circuit is used while the warm water coming out of the condenser is cooled and reused again. Okay. So in such cases, pond circuit cooling towers are used where the water loses water loses heat to the atmosphere. So this is the this is the view of the cooling tower. This and there are some other parts electric research you know you don't need to read this so this was all about uh, this uh, power uh, steam power plant this was the brief uh, this was brief introduction uh, of everything uh, about everything uh, on this power thermal power stations hope you can understand it very easily from this note it's a very concise and uh, this uh, easy note so uh, inshallah you will uh, understand everything from this note so this was the last uh, topic about thermal power stations so please uh, 
consult this note and uh, before uh, before uh, listening this lecture you put your note in front of you so then uh, we will start uh, next chapter okay thank you